as well as on YouTube, we want you to know that you are joining us live this morning at New Life Christian Fellowship this morning. Come on, those who are in the house, let us go on and begin to clap this morning because, yes, we are many here in number, but you are joining us at 1321 Providence Road here in Brandon, Florida. And we are truly excited about having you join us on today. And we want you to know, as you are watching on today, there is going to be a special portion up in our service on today. And if you know someone who's normally watching at this time, and they're not watching this morning, let them know that we will be having our special session today coming from our women this morning of new life. And that is because every fifth Sunday, there's going to be a special edition just for you. Our scripture reads this morning and it says, Psalms 34, and it says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. And it says in the third verse, Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. And let us pray, Father God, hear us this morning. And let us first say, hallelujah. Come on, we say hallelujah this morning. Hallelujah this morning. Oh, God, we are so grateful, God. We are so grateful. We know that we wake up every morning and we say, oh, God, we thank you. Thank you for protecting us on last night, dear God. And that many of us this morning, we did not hear where the death angel had attacked not one member of our family. And for that, oh God, we are truly grateful. But we are standing, we are watching, and some of us even may be sitting. But we are thankful, oh God, that you touched us with the finger of your divine love. You touch us, oh God, and you woke us up to a day that we've never seen before. And for that, we're so grateful. Mm -hmm. And oh God, even as our service is beginning this morning, and, and we're here, oh God, just to worship you together. Because your words that were two or three who are gathered in my name, there I will be in the midst. So we know that you're here with us this morning, according to your word. So God, so, God, this morning, we thank you, dear God, for all of those who have decided, dear God, is to join us. We thank you, oh God, right now for the rhema word that has already been prepared for us, according to thus says the Lord. And even, oh God, as we hear the word, we know that the word has been sent by you, dear God, for us is the feaststone in the moment. But even as we are feasting on in the moment, oh God, that we will be reminded of the many, many minutes and the many uh, uh, hours and the many days may come, oh God, that we would need to use and possibly regurgitate this word today. God bless Minister Sherwood and all of those who are preparing right now, dear God. Bless every member who's listening, non-members who are listening, oh God. Bless everyone in the sanctuary right now, in the name of Jesus. And for this, we give you praise and we give you honor. In Jesus' name, that the church, come on, let everybody say amen, amen, and amen. And we're so excited, amen. Jesus. Well, good morning, New Life. Friends, family members, those of you watching on Facebook, YouTube. Listen, I want, heard the woman of God said, would y'all say hallelujah? Would you clap your hands? Listen, if you don't feel like doing that, it's okay. But listen, I want to let you know that you mean something. Come on, look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, say neighbor. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor. Say, I am somebody. Hallelujah. You know why? Because he died for you and I. Come on, let's sing the song right quick. We're going to get out the way. Hey, 
I'm so grateful for him. He thought I was worth something, something enough. <laughs> you thought I was worth saving. So you came and changed my life. You thought I was worth keeping. So you cleaned me up inside. You thought I was to die for. So I can be free, so I can be whole. I can tell everyone I know. Can you sing it with me? So you thought I was worth saving. You got it. So you came. So you came and changed my life. You thought I was worth keeping. Come on, sing it with us if you believe that today. Come on. You got it, praise God. something to him. So I could be free. So I could be whole. How many want to be free in this place? I said, how many want to be free? Yes. How many want to be made whole? Amen. Yes. We come to have church. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Mother V. So I could be whole. Hallelujah. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to Bishop. Good morning, morning, Mother. Priscilla, to all of my new life uh, family and friends, those here in the sanctuary, and those who are viewing remotely out there on YouTube and Facebook. First, I just want to take this opportunity as this is the last Sunday and the last day in the month of October, which has been Pastor's Anniversary Appreciation Month. And I just want to say congratulations to you, Bishop, and to Priscilla for 23 years of 
ministry. Bless God, amen. You never know the impact that you've made on my life of being Bless here, being Lord. a transport. I love you dearly, and I congratulate you both. Is it all right if I clap my hands for myself? Amen. I'm clapping for you over there. I am so grateful. Can I, can I clap a little bit more? Yeah, you can clap. <laughs> I said crap, not clap. <laughs> what about for the first, what you call it, Marty? Our the first, first lady. The first sis. Can we get, amen. 23 years. That's Come right. on, 23 years. That's all right, sir. Ain't been easy either. 37 years. Ain't been easy. I'm telling you, I promise you, ain't been easy. Amen. God ain't bless you. Uh, and this is still standing. A lot of ministries have come and gone, but yet here we are, still standing strong. And look this better for it. beautiful edifice, and we thank God for what you have done in your leadership. Dear thank you. So I just appreciate you so much, and I love you both dearly. Amen. We love you. I am grateful to Bishop that he has allowed the women's ministry to use each fifth Sunday of the year um, to bring uh, women awareness. Uh, we name it Women's Awareness Sunday. As we shift to the next level in ministry, we must level up and be concerned and bring awareness to relevant issues that affect the women of our church, our homes, our communities in which we live. In addition to October being Breast Cancer Awareness Month, it is also Domestic Violence Awareness Month. This morning, I am here to raise awareness to root out this violence mm. against Man. women, girls, and even men and boys. That's right. As I am sure you all are well aware of, there is an astronomical amount of violence of all types going on in our world, our nation, and our community. Violence is at an all-time high, and I describe it as another pandemic. In no way could My I God. even begin to address all the various types of and acts of violence that dominate our society today. However, I am here to shed some light on a segment of violence that I feel as a church community we often overlook and don't talk much about it, and that is domestic violence against women and girls. I am in no way an expert in this field or have any type of professional expertise. But I have experienced it personally. Yes, My I God. have. Mm, In these few brief moments, I just want to share a very small amount of information about domestic violence that I have become familiar with. And I want to provide a few tips that we can use to recognize the signs of domestic violence and abuse so that when we see these signs involving our sisters and our brothers, as well as our children and teens, and we sense a need, mm. we may be able to become a support link to get them the help that is needed when it is needed. It can be hard to come to terms with the reality that domestic abuse can happen in our churches at the hands of fellow Christians, even our pastors and our lay leaders. But abuse is often perpetrated by Christians, and many women suffer in silence due to shame and the failure of the church in addressing domestic violence, this terrible issue. The main perpetrators of abuse are husbands and boyfriends, although it's important to note that men can be domestic abuse victims as well. Whenever and an individual is abused, it is a serious violation of one's God-given personhood and human right to freedom. As such, it is critical for the church to break the silence on domestic abuse Amen. and advocate for the end of gender-based violence. Amen. If you've ever skimmed through the Bible, especially the Old Testament, you've seen stories of violence from rape to slavery and even war. 
Well, how do we reconcile the God of the Bible, who at times seems to promote violence, with our, how do we reconcile that with our experience of domestic violent abuse? Scripture is often used to keep women silent about their experience as domestic so true. abuse survivors, victims, to urge them to stay with an abusive partner and even to justify their abuse. But the Bible is clear that God opposes those who oppress, marginalize, and abuse others. The Bible views all forms of domestic violence as sin, including verbal abuse, and exhorts us to protect ourselves from violent people. Even in troubled relationships where one is provoked, the Bible speaks out against responding with violence. You can't stop violence and end violence with violence. God's heart is to deliver the abuse and to protect women by calling <coughs> husbands to provide for the physical and emotional needs of their wives with sensitivity, with gentleness, encouraging them to become all that God has created them to be. Any form of abuse is unacceptable behavior and defies God's calling for Christ followers to relate to each other in love. Physical and sexual violence abuse is and occurs when physical force is used against someone in any way that injures them. It can be seen in behaviors of physical, verbal, psychological, emotional, sexual, relational, financial, controlling, stalking and harassment, spiritual and religious abuse, reproductive abuse, and image-based abusive action. It often leads to very, very serious injuries and even death. It is often a generational thing. It's father, son sees father abusing, so what does he do? It is not a low income or a I high income you. thing. It's not an age or, or color problem. Talk to us. It invades every area and levels of our society. One in four women and one in nine men experience severe, intimate partner physical violence. My God. Women between the ages of 20, 18 and 24 are most commonly abused by an intimate partner. Jesus. One in 15 children are exposed to uh, intimate violence, and 90% of those are actual eyewitnesses to violence perpetrated on their mother. So true. In 2019, over 220 Floridians were killed in domestic violence incidents. My God. I can only imagine how yes. that statistic has written since COVID-19 pandemic, mm. especially when people were quarantined in their Jesus. homes and their tempers and their emotions were stressed. Statistics reveal in 2019 that in Florida alone, 105,298 crimes of domestic violence was reported to Florida law enforcement agencies. Over 66,000 uh, arrests were made. Certified uh, domestic violence centers provided 563,000, over 563,000 nights of emergency shelter. My for God. 13,500 survivors Jesus. and their children. And many, many more go unreported. Undocumented. Mm -hmm. The national statistics show 22 to 25 percent of all women experience domestic violence in some form or fashion at some point. Oh, God, help us. 
and we don't even not talk about the injuries and the hospitalization. Jesus, have mercy on us. Domestic violence uh, mostly occurs, as I said, in intimate relationships of men against women, but it does occur women against men. And right. very often, and with now with this, I may get this synonym, these acronyms wrong, LGBTQ. Now we have women against women and men against men in relationships. Well, you always had that. And there's sexual violence in those. Um, but what's very, very heartbreaking is when parents and other adults commit domestic violence They're against kids. children. Yeah. How awful. Um, let's look at some behaviors that we can see. Could I have slide number one, please? You have to speak in the mic. Okay. Please. Domestic violence is seen in belittling behavior. And that's when they blame you for their own abusive behavior. Have you ever heard a man say, well, you caused me to do this. <laughs> <laughs> I exactly. wouldn't have hit you if. See you, or it's exactly. seen when they see you as property or a sex object rather than a person. And then they use your children against you. Okay. You and then they use male privilege. I'm the man of this house. Lord, help us. I'm over. I'm the priest of this home. Help us, Jesus. Okay. And then in economic abuse, you, I, I got to control your money. Lord, help us. I got to have your money. You can't spend your money like you want to. Jesus, have mercy on us. Slide number two. Domestic violence is seen in controlling behavior, using isolation, keeping you from your family and your friends. Like Something wrong with that. Sure is. Limit access to your money. You can't even go to get to the bank. You can't go nowhere. You they, you got can't spend no money unless they know what you spend. The is a lie. The internet, they, they they limit your access to your own internet, your own phone, your own car. Mm -hmm. They're constantly checking in on you. Where you at? Where you been? Who you been with? Using coercion, threats, and intimidation. Using isolation again, keeping you by yourself where you can't be with other people. And they minimizing and denying and blaming. Oh, uh, it, I, it wasn't too bad. It was just a little push. I just did a little <laughs> tap, tap. Uh, I didn't do that. That's not what I did. It was her fault. It was his fault. So that's controlling behavior. Slide number three is violent behavior. They have bad and unpredictable temper. Can't control your temper. Go off on any little thing. Just go hit the ceiling. Hurt you or even threaten to hurt or kill you. Oh, even if they don't hurt you, just the threat of hurt, I'm going to hurt you, I'm going to knock your teeth out. Father, forgive me. Is domestic violence. Father, I've been there, me. done that. <laughs> Lord, I know what it's like. Uh, Threaten to take your children away from the, you and harm them. Never if you that. don't do what I say, do I'm gonna take these children and I'm gonna throw them in the river. It's been done. We see it on the news con constantly. Teeth ain't got no problem. Threaten to commit suicide if you leave. if you don't stay with me, I'm gonna kill myself, kill yourself. Mm. Go ahead. I ain't never heard that one. <laughs> Force you to have sex and destroy your belongings. So these are just the little behaviors that we see when we find people being exposed or involved in domestic violence. So family and friends, if there's anyone out there who is experiencing any of these actions of domestic violence, please seek out help for yourself and your family. Amen. You don't have to go it alone. We are your sisters and we are your brothers and we are your keepers. Find someone you confide in, can confide in and seek help immediately. If you need support or a resource referral, let me know and I will be glad to provide assistance in seeing to it that you get the help 
that you need in a confidential manner. Amen. To my New Life sisters, if this is a subject that you would like to address more thoroughly, we can invite a professional in with the necessary expertise in this field to come in and do a full presentation on this unhealthy topic. Thank you for listening to me uh, to do my task today to raise awareness of this very critical segment of violence, which continues to plague our land and ag even against women who we worship together with in our own churches. My God. This is why building reliable, godly relationships with our sisters and our brothers is so important so that they will have the confidence to share their needs with someone and know that it will remain safe and confidential. And remember, if you are a domestic violence perpetrator, we love you, but you need help. Amen. And there is help Amen. out there for you. Amen. To the victim Thank you, Lord. and to the perpetrator, most importantly, you need to seek the help of God. Jesus. He can turn this situation around. On another note this morning, before I take my seat, I would like to say that it is time to prepare for our Women's Ministry Thanksgiving Project. In the past, we have prepared and given away toiletry bags to various ministries. Well, recently, I met a gentleman who is the manager of Echo. And it was just ironic because I had been talking to Sister Silly, and she was telling me about Echo in her area. Well, Echo is a crisis center not located not too far from here, right on Riverside Street uh, between um, 301 and um, Providence Road, right down the street here. And I pass by it every time I'm going to and from church. But after talking with him and sharing that their, and he was sharing that their main needs are socks and underwear, I decided that our women this year will adopt that organization for our outreach program this year by having a men and women's sock and underwear drive. New Life family, we need your help to bring in uh, socks, men's and women's socks and underwear for people who are in crisis. And this is a very good organization. It does everything from helping people find jobs, get their GEDs, when people have been in fires, giving them starter packages like dishes and clothes and uh, uh, linen and whatever. However, because of COVID-19, they can only accept new, new socks and underwear. And they need all sizes from small to XXL. It is my understanding that the dollar store has t-shirts for a dollar. Walmart has good uh, prices on socks and underwear. And also, if you have clean, I mean clean, decent tennis shoes or casual walking shoes that you would like to give away, we will accept those as well. Members, please help us with this project. There will be a donation bin set up in the back of the children meet, and you can bring them to here to us uh, all the way up until Monday, November the 22nd. Again, my family, Thank you for listening, and God bless you. Great job, Mother. Great job. Let's go. Come on, let's give Mother a hand. That's Come on, y'all can do better That's than right. that. That's right. Can we stand up for a minute? We're going to wake y'all up. Y'all look like y'all a little sleepy. Come on, stand up a little bit. Amen. You look beautiful. You look gorgeous. You look gorgeous. Amen. Wave at somebody. Look at somebody. Wave at them. So I'm glad you're here this morning. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless Glory you, to God. You. Amen. It's worship time. Come on, somebody say it's worship time. It's worship time. In the Amen. We thank you so Wonderful much, job, uh, Women's Ministry, for presenting that. Amen. Not memories. too often do we hear that. Amen. In our worship experience. Amen. Especially in the colored Amen. church. Survival. Should I say survival. the black church? Amen. It's so awesome. Amen. That we have that opportunity. Amen. To hear. Amen. And, and, and I know that I'm not going to waste no time. I know it's worship time, but I, I appreciate that opportunity, uh, Mother. 
and the women's ministry, amen, because too many times, too, ma too many times, we have saints, amen, that are going through s the situations that you just heard, amen, uh, I'm a product of that, amen, and I don't say that braggadociously, amen, amen, respect to my parents, amen, they've been together for almost 43 years now, I amen, know. but, uh, amen, that experience, amen, it does a whole lot to the children that have to experience that you kind better, of thing. You better talk to us. Amen, even as a 40-something-year-old uh, uh, son, amen, that had gone through some of that, you amen, remember. It, it still, amen, it still affects you, amen, and, and so I just thank God for for people like Mother V, amen, bringing those things to the church, amen, because it needs to be talked about amen. more often, amen, amen, because it does something to uh, the young people, amen, and, and ecumenical stuff, the justice for women, amen, needs to be established and talked about more often, I'm sorry, go because ahead, because a lot of us, if the truth be told, have lived through domestic violence ourselves, that's what he's saying, I know I have, haven't you, if you, if you are a survivor of domestic violence, lift up your hand, let me see you. See there? Harley, nobody's not been touched by it. Thank you. Amen. Go ahead, sir. Bless you. Amen. So we just give God all Very the praise and all the honor. Amen. That's right, it is. Amen. For those who have come out of that situation. Amen. The song says, I'm looking for a miracle. Just believe and receive it. God will perform it today. You can turn that up a little bit, Kelly. Hey! Come on, Leanne. Come on, Leanne. You hear it now, Leanne. Come on. Hey.
say, God will make a way. I don't know way. I don't, I don't know way. Say it again. I get, get the miracle. miracle. Y'all got it. Every day, hey. God will make a way. If you believe that today, anybody expecting a miracle? I am. Amen. Hallelujah. He said, "Is anybody?" Amen. He said, "Is anybody?" <laughs> That's right, Bishop. Is anybody? Help me, brother. <laughs> I am. I am. Hallelujah. Say it one more time. Maybe they didn't hear you. Say it one more time. Is anybody today. expecting a miracle from I God am. today? <laughs> Should I tell you? Come on, Hallelujah. say it one time. They're not. They, they not with you, sure. They ain't ready. I know, Bishop. Come on, let that anointing. <laughs> I'm waiting for me. Give me that joy like a river. Follow. 
He's so good, we give him all the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, we praise your name. Give you all. Give you all the praise. Come on, give worship time. Oh Lord, we praise your name. Come on, help me sing. Everybody, hallelujah. Say, hallelujah. Hallelujah. glory today. All the glory. All the glory. Give him all the praise. All the praise. Oh, Lord, we praise you. Let's take it out. Oh, Lord, we praise your name. 
to him. Tap into him. Stay right here with us. Filling us with your love. And for these blessings, he lifts Without a doubt, you will know that we have been revived when we shall leave this place. Can you join me in singing, sweet Holy Spirit? How many good cooks we got out there? Yeah. Cooking is something you don't want to rush. How many, how many folk like to eat out there? Amen. I do. Thank you, Mother. I do, too. And the wonderful thing about liking to eat is, is if you're somewhere near where the food is being cooked, you can smell the, the aromas coming out of the kitchen. And you can tell when somebody really knows what they're doing because there's a fragrance. Worship creates a fragrance. Yeah. Doesn't matter what you're wearing or what you've gone through. In fact, the uglier your clothes and the more hell you've gone through makes worship that much more pristine. Right. Nobody caught that. We seem to think that worship has a lot to do with how clean we are. Worship has something to do with a heart and a mind that has, has come to a place of acknowledging who he is. I'm grateful this morning for life. I am. So I'm grateful for life. Got a few issues, uh, physical issues, dealing with some cataract issues. 
there were some health issues, but I'm thankful for life. Amen. Uh, this miraculous gift of taking out the cataracts, I can't wait till I go get mine. Taking, I'm tired of seeing mist and, yeah. and spots. <laughs> there's some things you can take care of when you get old, and there's other things you're just going to have to endure. Amen. But thank God for life. And thank God for you. Amen. I said, thank God for you. You make my life, you've made my life matter. You've made my life seem exceptional. The anniversary month, the anniversary week for me and my wife was nothing short of spectacular. I don't know what to say and how to say thank you. I know doggone well that, that, uh, that none of us are truly worthy of that kind of claim and honor, but God don't mind us getting it when we do work for him. And I'm a proponent, I tell you, uh, 66 years of living, there's a lot of noise out there now, but I want to believe that you're in a place where this voice has been challenged. I want to believe that I'm a calming agent in the midst of uncertainty. God has given me the ability to discern what's right, what's wrong, and where the truth lies. Amen. One of the challenges with the nation is it struggles always, like most people, with dealing with truth. The problem looking at his past because his past doesn't truly give a honest, uh, give, give them a reflection that they want to look at. No one wants to look at their past when it's messed up. Even when Jesus has delivered you from it, it's still not a pleasant thing to look at. But our job as Christians is to point you to some things and, and, uh, I was going to share with you why uh, our current situation is the way it is. It's because of sin, but I was going to be a bit more detailed about it. But we had been, I had started looking at the book of Psalms. I think I started in Psalms 27. You all remember that? And um, the Holy Ghost said, now I want you to stay there for a while. Because these are the, 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 the basics of, of relationship with God. I, one of the first, one of the first Bible verses I, I, uh, committed for memory was the 23rd Psalm that I'm going to pre preach out of today. And I remember even in the choir that I was in, there was a song that they were saying, although I walk through the valleys of death, I fear no evil for the Lord, the Lord is, his rod, his rod and staff. Now they look at me like I'm crazy. They comfort me. If I can pull Bethel back, they get there. <laughs> then he says, Present for my enemy, my cup round the Lord. Then he said, For the Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. Y'all never heard it before? They did a song out of the 23rd. No, Y'all never heard this 23rd song sung? Let's see how y'all are. <laughs> well, well, we used to sing that in my church. In my church, I, I remember the guy, uh, uh, Mickey, Mickey somebody. I could see his face, he had a cracked tooth. His family was singers, and they would sing that song. So the 23, 23rd song was a song committed to memory even before I became an authentic Christian. Some of y'all did some scriptures, and you wasn't Christian yet either. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Amen. Some of y'all were, 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 were Catholics and didn't know God at all. Amen, amen. But I want to I teach out of the 23rd Psalm this morning uh, for your hearing and for your edification, those that are watching my Facebook and YouTube live. Like, once again, the... The anniversary was, um, words can't express the joy that I felt. I know my wife uh, gave some remarks, but I don't know where the 23 years have gone. You know, how do you do when you first start something like this? You don't know what's going to happen. We've had many challenges, many ups and downs. I've had my own personal challenges, but the constant in it is that God has been faithful. I'm going to say that again. The cost in it is that God has been faithful. Yes, you know, you know that in, in life, we, we, we're to live. Uh, let me share this with you. I'm going to be doing a wedding, me and my sister. Uh, we're going to be marrying my niece uh, to her boo, boyfriend. <coughs> they're stacking, so, you know, they, they're already living together. I don't mind putting their business in the street. <laughs> they, they ain't going to do nothing. But, but, but here's the point. That's not the issue I'm, I'm trying to raise up. The issue of... The issue I'm raising up is this, is that um, I'm a history major, and 
I wish if I would have been afforded the opportunity to know what my ancestors did for a living. Now, we did, so, we did a cursory uh, search on our ancestors, and I, I believe we were able to find that one of our great-grands was, was a participant of the Civil War. But a lot of stuff is sketchy. I said sketchy. The family is and what your family did. It's, an, it's imperative that you know who you are. And, and, and so when she spoke about domestic violence this morning, it, it, and I just kept saying amen because I am a byproduct of domestic violence. I saw my mother get hit. I saw my aunt get hit. I remember us uh, rallying the forces to fight them off of the women in my home. Domestic violence was something that we seen on the regular. Anybody hear what I'm saying? Yeah, I had a cousin murdered by a husband in the house with his daughters in the house, stabbed her in the back, washed the knife off, sat down like nothing ever happened while the kids sat there. And they finally called. So I am, I am familiar, and, and when I say domestic, I am familiar with violence as a black man, as a hopeful black man. There, there, there have been advantages and disadvantages that because of the color of my skin I've had to deal with. Now, this is not about talking about color and race and ethnicity. I'm just dealing with facts. One of the challenges, and I'm going to deal with this next week, is that whenever you start talking about the past, people don't like, it, like to talk about it because it sometimes shines a negative light on them. I'm just more interested in the truth because the truth is what will set you free. With that said, I understood early on that I was disadvantaged. A child that had certain privileges and opportunities. It didn't take long to know that, that I didn't have the right stinkers, I didn't have the right things that other people had. And I realized early on, because only I came from a single parent home, I was dealing with disadvantages. Anybody hear what I'm saying? So, so you, so I said, well, well I, I ain't had no but one, one, one mother, one parent. We made it. Okay, that's you. One size don't fit all. And if you could sit here and tell me that that it, it takes two to make you, and it don't take two to build you, it takes two. So early on, a lot of us have dealt with disadvantages. So all my life, I have been looking for an edge. I'm going to pre see. I ain't get to the text yet, but I'm in the text already. I said, all my life, I have been looking for some kind of edge. Why? Because I already realized I was dealing from the back of the deck behind the eight ball at the back of the bus. I realized that my skin would sometimes not always provide me or my name would provide me the opportunities that I should have. So I, I've been trying to find an edge. And all my life, I looked for an edge until I found Jesus. And the 23rd Psalm is one that, that gave me hope. It resonates in my spirit, and I hope it will. I'm going to give you four points, but let's read the text first. In the, uh, in, in the first verse of uh, the 23rd Psalm, the Bible begins reading like this. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. I could do it blindfolded. Leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I shall fear, come on, for, for his rod and his staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table for me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of Amen. So for the scripture. So I want to preach on this particular subject. The Lord is. Somebody say blank. She said shepherd, but he's more than a shepherd. He's my wheel in the middle of a wheel. He's my day star. He's my alpha and omega. He's my bridge when I need to get over some waters that are trouble. I said it. When I need a king, he's my king. When I need a judge, he's my judge. When I need a redeemer, he's my redeemer. When I need a kinsman, he's my kinsman. Somebody say, the Lord is. Father, have your way in this place. Help me share this word to your people in a very, in a very, a very 
intimate way that we might leave this place encouraged and edified and your people glorified in the wonderful name of Jesus the Christ. Somebody say amen. Come on and clap your hands if you love him. Life is not an easy journey. The road is not always smooth. The conditions are not always favorable. And many hazards lie along the way. While life contains many joys, it can also be plagued by sorrows. It can be confusing and even at times terrifying. Furthermore, our needs for the journey are never ending. How many know that no matter where you're at, you always have needs? And I, I, I say this to you in a, in a very honest and humble way. I didn't know much. I left home at 18 years old and had to experience life on, on everybody else's terms because at that moment, I wasn't a leader. I didn't have a father. Even though I had a biological father, he didn't lead me growing up. I lacked leadership abilities, leadership principles. I was in the army. I was on my own, and I was looking to be led by somebody or something. Do I have a witness in here? So journeys are hazardous. Clearly, what I've realized with this overwhelming sense of helplessness, that we were never created to navigate life alone. You and I were never created to navigate life alone. John 3.16 and Psalm 23 are the best known and probably the most beloved passages in all of the word of God. The great 19th century preacher Charles Spurgeon entitled it as the Pearl of the Psalms. It is a psalm people turn to in life's most difficult times. For centuries it has given comfort, peace, hope and to those who read it. The chapter heading, a psalm of David, indicates only that David is the author, giving nothing to the time or the occasion of the writing. Some scholars think he composed it when he was a young boy while tending his father's flock. Certainly easy to imagine him visualizing these words while looking out on the sheep as they gazed in the afternoon sun. But most commentators, however, believe David wrote the 23rd Psalm late in his life. There was a strength and a maturity and a depth which are not wholly compatible with tender youth. The English pastor and evangelist F.B. Meyer wrote, it seemed rather to express the touch of a man who has learned good by knowing evil, who amid the many very experience of human life has fully tested the shepherd's grace of the Lord who he sings. Professor and author Haddon Robinson adds, David was a mature man filled with his shares, filled with his share of conflicting passions and confusing problems that comfort all human beings. Not only was he a heroic slave of Goliath, the devoted friend of Jonathan and the love of music and an able king, but he also was a haggard fugitive, an adulterer and a murderer. As a father, he had watched his baby die and wept when his, great, his ungrateful son Absalom tried to overthrow him. David has not left us with a beautiful thought or beautiful memories, but he's left us with an honest testimony that he's learned while living life to the hill. It is written, I believe, in the latter years of his life. David mind surely traveled back to the time when he was young, when he tended his father's sheep, when he killed a bear and he killed a lion. It probably brought him back when he was young, when he killed Goliath, Saul, and he thought about Bathsheba, Uriah, and Amnon. All these things were running through his mind, I would imagine, when he penned this psalm. He faced, I believe, this particular time in his life, death was about to come upon him. Anybody hear what I'm saying? This is in the recesses of his life, in the August of his life, when he's penning Psalm 23. And so he has, a, he has the opportunity to look back on life from a different perspective. Some critics have challenged David's authorship of the psalm, claiming that it was written much later. But I believe that David wrote this particular psalm with all of his profoundness. The first thing I want you to note about the psalm as it relates to you, and I, as I said, the title of the message, the Lord is my shepherd, or the Lord is whatever you need him to be. The first thing that David did, and he teaches us in the text today, is that he confessed that the Lord is his shepherd. He is. Somebody say he is. Somebody say he is my shepherd. 
the theme of all that follows the, the Lord, Yahweh, Jehovah, is the shepherd of his people. Scholars primarily believe there are two main images in this psalm. First, the shepherd and his sheep. Second, a gracious host and his guests. Some, however, see a third image, a guide and a traveler. The image of the shepherd was very familiar to the people of Israel, as many of uh, nations' patriarchs had tended sheep. So it is critically important for the reader to understand the ancient role of the shepherd in order to understand the text. Shepherds cared for their sheep in every sense of the word. Do I have a witness in here that once you became a sheep, that God began to care for you in every sense of the word? Oh, come on. I, I need to get a witness in here. I, I, I don't know about you, but I have a track record. I remember I used to work for Mr. Baba. I worked in the secular community. There was a time that I was working on a secular job, paying secular taxes, doing everything that everybody else did. But there was a time I accepted the call, and I shifted into what God said. I'm going to live by faith and not by sight. Do I have anybody here like that, that you got to a place where you realized that every dime that you got, all the sun that came, all the blessing that you got came from your shepherd. You can't say that nothing good or nothing bad happened to you without the shepherd's approval. There's nothing that happened to me in my life, whether good, bad, or indifferent, that the shepherd has not approved of. Do I have anybody here like that? You can confess right now that the Lord is. Somebody say the Lord is. Somebody say, the Lord is my shepherd. He's my shepherd. He's my shepherd. He's my shepherd. I said, he's my shepherd. And what do shepherds do? They care for the sheep. Uh, guess what? They, they, they get so intimately involved with the sheep. They, they, there's no midwife out there in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the wilderness. There's just a shepherd. He's not just a shepherd, but he's also a midwife. Do I have witnesses in here? That means when the, when the sheep get pregnant, watch this. Ain't nobody running to no doctor. The shepherd not only has the ability to care for the sheep, but the shepherd has a doctor's degree. He can deliver sheep. Do I have anybody in here? This morning, ah, you are the byproduct of a new birth. That the shepherd washed you in the womb, his spirit. One day he, he said, come forth. He said, come forth. And you came forth. Do I have anybody in here this morning? I said, do I, y'all mighty quiet. Y'all ain't preaching with me. I said, do I have anybody in here that you were born again? That the shepherd... I said the shepherd. I said the good shepherd. I said there's a difference between a good shepherd and a bad shepherd. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, there is a difference between a good shepherd and a bad shepherd. Because the good shepherd takes care of his sheep. I said the good shepherd will watch over his sheep. The good shepherd, watch this shepherd will always make sure that his sheep are protected i don't want you to know this morning that i can give god praise for 66 years of being the good shepherd of my life i've been shot at i've been stabbed drugs couldn't get me alcohol couldn't get me heart wrecks couldn't take me out i wish i had a witness in here plane accident i was on the plane when all the engines there was just one engine plane and the engine had to stay afloat i wish i had a witness in here do i have anybody who can testify that you got a good shepherd when death to take you out the shepherd said no stop right there stop right there somebody the shepherd a praise i'm going to give the shepherd a praise come on and give the shepherd a praise if he's been leading you, praise him. See, there's a difference between a hireling and a shepherd. A hireling, when th a threat comes, a hireling will run. A hireling will scatter. A hireling will only care about himself, but the good shepherd will stay right there with the sheep. It is equally important to know something, not just about the shepherd, but to understand the nature of the sheep. To fully appreciate the psalm, you've got to know something about the sheep and all the things that we do not want to be. I'm going to say that again. There's some things that you got to know about the shepherd, some of the things the sheep don't want to be, but they are. Sheep are dumb. 
Oh, don't look at me like that. You know you done made some dumb, de dumb decisions. Come on. Don't look at me like that. You know you done made some dumb mistakes. Don't look at me like that. You know you done said some dumb things out your mouth. You done said some things that you wish you wouldn't have said. Come on, she talked to... Oh, it wasn't just when you was a kid when you said and they smacked you. You done said some stuff now as an adult you shouldn't have said. Sheep are dumb. We don't like nobody to tell us that. But we say stupid things. I have to often tell people that I love, stop saying things like, I could die. Stop saying things like, nobody loves me and the world's over. You're, you're, you're your own enemy with the words that you say. The words that you say are life and death. The life and power of death is in your tongue. So I'm always correcting people that I love. I gotta, you got to watch this. Watch this. If you don't watch what they say, you might be in agreement with what they say. Sheep are stubborn. Stubborn. This vaccine has been out for a while. But guess what? Sheep are stubborn. All these reasons why they do this and why they do that and do this and that. But if the shepherds say take something, you just do what the shepherds say. Somebody said, well, the shepherd didn't say anything. No, the shepherd didn't say anything. But the shepherd left, she left under shepherds on earth to give us some sense of guidance and some clarity so that we don't kill each other. Got to trust something or somebody. Amen. If you didn't trust your job, you wouldn't go to work tomorrow. The truth be told, sheep are defenseless. And they're really without a sense of direction. And sheep are prone to wander. And watch this. One of the things that all of us are guilty of, we're prone we're, or we're slow to recognize danger. How many times you told your children, don't go there, don't do that, don't do this, and they tell you, ah. Sheep become nervous and uneasy. They're easily excited and they're frightened. And one thing is certain about sheep, they'll perish if they're left to themselves. I'm so glad that the Lord is. I said, I'm so glad. I, I lost a little weight, but I'm so glad the Lord is my shepherd. Because, hey, Willie Ann, if he wasn't my shepherd, it wouldn't just be a little weight I lost. I lost my life. I wish somebody would preach with me. And somebody said, I'm glad. I'm glad that the Lord is my shepherd. Ah, that, that, that joke that I was in love with that beat my behind. I'm glad that the Lord is my shepherd. Why? Why? Because he got me out of there in the nick of time. Somebody shout, I'm glad that the Lord is. When I was stubborn, I'm glad. When I was dumb, I'm glad. When I was prone to wonder, I'm glad. When I was slow to recognize danger, I'm glad that the Lord is my shepherd. And David confessed that this shepherd was the Lord Yahweh and he was faithful. His shepherd was a faithful. Somebody say he's faithful. He was a faithful shepherd. And, and the thing about what you got to know uh, about this, this shepherd is that he would do anything for his sheep. Somebody say he'd do anything for a sheep. He would do anything for a sheep. Watch this. In verse 2, and his, it's point number 2. The Lord will meet every need. Somebody say he'll meet every need. Oh, come on. Listen, I, I'm, I'm trying, trying to tell you why I became a Christian. I, I, I went in the army, but they couldn't meet all my needs. I thought my mother could meet her. Uh -uh, when I, at, at some point, watch this. She couldn't, she couldn't afford me. Couldn't afford me. So I went to the army and I realized, guess what? The army couldn't afford me. I got married and realized my wife couldn't afford me. Who could afford me? Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. Or oh, y'all ain't talking back to me. Somebody say Jesus. Somebody say Jesus know how to take care of you. Oh, come I, I see. I, I, not, 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 let, 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 hey, look here. I, I don't need the pretenders to shout at me. I need some folk in here who Jesus had really taken care of them. He done put some clothes on your back. Shoes on your feet. I, I, need, I, I said I need somebody. I need 
somebody this morning that can give God some praise that since they known to be able to talk in the sea that God has been the one that has always been providing he's made a way out of no way he put shoes on my feet a coat on my back I'm in a car because of him I said the Lord has met all my needs and whenever I have a need he meets it in a gracious and glorious way I need somebody to give God praise because I got I got everything I need go to my house I got food in the refrigerator I got gas in the car I got membership in the house money in the bank and I got praise in my heart I wish I had somebody could testify I got everything I need say yeah and ain't nobody mad but the devil some of y'all ought to be praising God right now because you're in a place you've never been before you can buy your own clothes you can buy your own mess whatever you want God has set you up for a miracle open up your mouth and give God some praise because your needs are met if I wanted to get on a plane tonight and fly to Germany I could do it I'm talking about a God that has met all your needs come on Anna put your new floor down didn't he is he gonna do it will he do it will he do it say yeah say yeah I'm talking about a God that when I was a little boy knew I had an affinity for nice things knew nobody could afford it but gave me a job that I could get what I want I said he'll meet what you need somebody give God praise hey minister T are you driving the car you want has he met your need somebody open up their mouth say yeah say yeah that text right there you normally can't go any further when you see it he said that Lord is my shepherd I shall not want you know what that means I got everything touch your name and say I got everything my, my brother just said to me the other day said are oh, you watching the game I said what game are you talking about he said it's a basketball game he said, it's on NBC. I said, I don't care if it's on NBC, CBS, or ABC. Because I got the NBA package. You know what that means? If, it, if it's not on ABC, or if it's not on CBS, then it's on cable. Which means I got everything. Deacon, some of them didn't grow up like us. All we had was one pair of shoes. You know, we didn't have a, listen, we didn't have a, a shoemaker we could go to. If the shoe bottom got wore out, we had to put something at the bottom of the shoe. I'm so glad I ain't got to live like that no more. I want somebody to walk with me. I'm so glad when I was growing up, when they fed us, it was a whole plate of grits and a little piece of fat back and that had to satisfy you I'm glad this morning I could eat eggs Benedict eggs Arnold eggs upside down any way you want to put eggs I got enough eggs you want to know why because the Lord is my shepherd I shall when I was a kid I used to smell food coming out of other people's house I was always hungry but guess what I got a shepherd I got a shepherd I got a shepherd that will feed me say yeah say yeah say yeah not only will he meet your physical needs but if you get real like me and start serving him He'll meet the needs of your heart's desire. When people say, why you got to have that? That's frivolous. Or that's a waste of money. 
or that's a waste of time that's a waste of your money and that's a waste of your time if I like gators by God let me have what I like you ain't gotta like them but my God shall supply you want to know why I didn't join no gangs because no gang could meet all my needs what happened if I get arrested you might be able to get me a lawyer but you can't you can't fix the case I got a lawyer now that could not only fix the case but he can turn the heart of the judge you better talk to me somebody I got a savior sometimes I'm glad I wasn't born with a silver spoon in my mouth because I had to look for everything that I needed but I'm grateful this morning I'm glad when they said unto me come let us go into the house of the Lord hallelujah the Bible says he maketh me to lie down in green pastures but you gotta understand I've been over there I walked the hills of Judea and the hills of Judea there's not a lot of places where there's green grass it takes a skilled shepherd to find out where the grass is green at I want to tell somebody I would have never came to Tampa I ain't lose nothing down here I'm a New Yorker I don't want to see nothing flying no confederate flag but I'm glad so glad that I had nothing to do about it but this is the place that God wanted to bring me where he can bless me open up the windows of heaven and pour me out a blessing so big that I ain't got somebody open up their mouth give God some praise say yeah you're gonna make me preach up in here say yeah you leading me besides watch this the reason why water's got to be still is because sheep are afraid they're afraid when waters are running they're afraid of their perpetrators but God said take your rest the water is still so when you and I drink we ain't got to worry about our enemy go ahead and take a drink go ahead and take a nap go ahead and take a vacation go ahead and take some time off you need a sabbatical take it why because the Lord will lead you beside the still waters and when you get weary he'll restore your soul he'll lead you in the path of righteousness for his namesake watch this David realized that death was up ahead but death wasn't new to him for some of you and for some of us we've seen our loved ones die and we realize we've lived more time than we got left but I thank to God this morning that no matter what it looks like though you slay me yet will I trust you yea though I walk through the valleys of the shadow prostrate issues through the shadows of death I'll fear somebody say fear diabetes I'll fear somebody say cancer I'll fear somebody say strokes I'll fear y'all ain't talking back to me I feel my help in here today yay my brother got pancreatic cancer yay though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I'm not gonna fear any evil why because the Lord I said I got the Lord who am I preaching to see that's why I said the Lord is well what is he is he your day star is he your way maker is he your boo he's my everything he's my tomorrow he's my today he's my friend he's everything he's my savior he's my lord and i want to give him praise for being all in that somebody open up their mouth so i gotta know 
Christ. Then he'll meet my needs. Number three, you got to trust that God will protect you. I trust that now. I don't get on planes and go places and see and plan my way back. I've been flying all through COVID. Me and Sherwood went flying when COVID first hit. We took and and and, and mother mother Mary do we went down to uh, the Gulf the Gulf Coast of Mississippi to bury her. We didn't know how how contagious the disease were. But we went down there anyway, and God made sure that we bypassed the disease. We ain't catch nothing. All we caught was a plane back to Tampa and made it back safely. You want to know why? Because he's my protector. Even when I was a drunk, he protected me. I know you don't like to hear that stuff, but I want to tell you something. There's some folk out there right now that don't know him, but ain't nothing the devil could do to mess him up. They might fall down, they might go to jail, they might lose a job, but their lives will not be forfeited. You want to know why? There's a call on their life. I dare you to give somebody a high five and say, neighbor, oh neighbor, you know why I'm alive? It's because the call, the call that's on my life is greater than my nest, is greater than my addiction, is greater than my proclivities. It's greater than my storm. I got a call on my life. That's why that bullet didn't kill me. That's why I got nine lives. I should have been dead, sleeping in my grave, but I'm still here. Give somebody a high five, an imaginary high five, and say, neighbor, I'm still here. I'm still here. I got protection. 24-7, at night the angels are watching over me. When I get in my car, the angels are watching over me. And they're watching my children. And they're watching my church members. And they're watching everybody I pray for. I got divine protection. I know you got insurance, but there's a greater insurance. Greater, greater than Affleck. Greater than State Farm. It's called Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. Mary's baby. The great emancipator. The great liberator. The great I am. She is. He is. He is. Hallelujah. 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 You want to know why? Somebody say, you can't be 66. You can't be turning 67. You're right. All the stuff I did. But every now and then, Carla, I stop at a place where he restores my soul. Do I have a witness in here? Come on, Anna. You should be looking like you're 90. But you look like you're 35. Because he restores. Somebody say, restores. Mother Eloise is past 80, but she looked like a 42-year-old spring chicken because he restores. She's driving her own car. Got the nerve to buy a new car because God has restored. Do I have anybody in here? I said I feel like shouting this morning. I feel my health because my strength has been restored. Open up your mouth and give God a praise and pray. Trust him. I trust him to protect me. I trust him to keep me. And if it dies, he wanted it to die. But who the Lord can pack him, he'll keep. And whatsoever I commit to him, he's able to keep up until that last day. Stop worrying. Stop panicking. It ain't nothing but a test. If God said it, if God said it, if God said it. across the field time to go home now but the bible says he does all this not for you not for me but he does it for his name's sake wow you mean to tell me that's why i got out of that mess his name was on the line i 
want you to know that every time the devil backs you in the corner, he don't realize that God's name is on the line. You want to know why it didn't go down? It was his name. For the name of the Lord is a high tower. And the righteous run in there and find shelter. Tell your neighbors and neighbor, I can't go down. He's mine and I'm his. Say yeah. Say yeah. And David said, as he closed the Psalms, the last point, he said, be assured, don't take this journey. Don't take this walk. If you're not assured of the Lord's goodness, in verse 6 it says, surely, surely, somebody say surely. I need somebody to preach for me. Santana, say surely. Say surely. Deacon, say surely. He's affirming this. He said, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. He had experience. That's what David was also able to say. I've never seen the righteous forsaken or their seed beg for bread. Tell your neighbor, I don't beg for bread. I'm righteous. Not because I'm good, but I'm righteous because I'm his. See ya. Come on, righteous people. See ya. You're going to get that new house. Not because of your credit, because you're righteous. See ya. You're going to get that new man. Not because you're a good woman, but because you're righteous. You're going to get that promotion. Not because you deserve it, but because you're righteous. Open up your mouth and give him a praise. Say, yeah. The Lord is. I had not been feeling good. I wasn't as strong as I used to be. But the Lord is my strength this morning. I thank him for giving me the strength that I need to do his labor somebody shout for me in this place I said I feel my strength this morning I feel my shepherd this morning for he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I'm I'm his own and the joy and the joy I share as we tarry there somebody say no other say no other And the devil thought I wouldn't shout my way in here. You liar. You thought I was weak. Thought I was defeated. But I got a shepherd. I got a shepherd. I got it. Pandemic came, but I got a shepherd. Somebody holler for me. Holler for me. Pandemic, didn't you realize? I got a shepherd. Say it. I got a shepherd. They cut the double city. They cut shady Sata. I got a shepherd. I got a shepherd. I got a shepherd. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, shout like you got one too. Shout like you got one too. What is it you want? Shout like you got a shepherd. What is it you need? Shout. I dare you to shout. I'm agreeing with you. 
What is it you want? It's in your mind? Give me your hand. Father, in the name of Jesus, let it be done. In the name of Jesus, just like she asked for. In Jesus' name. Somebody say, yeah! what you want tell them what you want be specific tell them exactly what you want tell them exactly what you want and be specific and God will God will God will God will God will say it say it Everything that I've wanted since I've been in ministry, I've gotten. Haven't gotten a new church yet, but I got it in here. It's in my heart. Haven't gotten my new home yet, but guess what? It's in my heart. It's in my mind. Haven't gotten the daycare and the aftercare yet, but guess what? I got the title and I got the deed. I might as well have it because that's what faith is. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. When you see me shouting, I'm shouting because I already got what I've been praying for. Now, now listen, in this pandemic dress, we've been seeing a lot of people dress down, dress up. Listen, dress to be comfortable. Just don't wear stuff that you know you shouldn't be wearing. But, but, but don't, don't take your cue from me unless you're in leadership. I dress like this because this is what I like doing. I like to dress up. I'm a professional. Now, someone said, I ain't, I'm a professional. I said, well, that's you. I like to dress up like this. Amen. I like to present myself. Why? Because these, this garment lets you know I'm special. Not special to you, but I'm special in this house. I'm special to do something. I want people to know who I am. So every now and then I wear this to remind people I'm not just a man. I am a man called by God. Where this remind myself that greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. And that I can actually do all things through Christ. 23 years ago, started a church in our house. Who had any clue that we'd be still here 23 years later? Somebody said, where the building? The building's right here. So I said, where the school? School is right here. I'm educating people every day you come here. You're getting information and insight like never before. I'm telling you, you're getting it. You're getting it from one of the best. We said, well, why do you say that? Because I'm telling you the truth. Monique, you hear me? There ain't many churches like this. I'm telling you. They're not going to tell you the whole truth. I tell you most of it, stuff that's about myself, I have to can't tell you all because I want you to come back. But I try to let y'all know that I'm just like you. But I don't, I don't change scripture. I don't force you to do something that the Holy Ghost can't make you do. I teach from that Bible, and I try to live my life as an example for those that are around me. Amen. And let the chips fall where they may. How many glad they came to the house of the Lord this morning? How many been praying for their pastor? I tell you, I feel strong, man. Cassandra, I feel it. Amen. Come on, who, who has announcements? I'm done. Well, hold, hold up. We need to give an altar call for salvation. If you're out there, if you're here, you're in a backslidden state, you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior. I'm talking to you that's out there. You could be a family member. Had to call a cousin, a niece this morning. She had a, a mother gave her a surprise birthday. If they're watching, uh, they wanted me to come, but I had so much going on. I was out of town, and I wanted to call and apologize. Because sometimes family members could think that you slight them, and I want them to know I ain't slighting nobody. Hmm? I, I, I love my family, regardless of their, their status with Christ. I love them. Thank God for family. Amen. So I'll keep my son Mark in prayer. We're hoping he comes home. Um, with that said, um, like I said, so the point I was making that we're going to do this wedding. So what I'm taking, what I'm taking comfort in, that if the Lord don't come back in 100 years, 
there'll be a recorded picture of me and my sister, Judge Vanessa Bogan and Dr. Bishop Robert L. Register conducting a wedding on November 4th, 2021, God willing. And if 100 years from now, the Lord hadn't come back, they'll be able to see that their people had jobs. Their people were, were, were noteworthy. Not like, I don't know. I don't know who they are. I don't know what they did. Anybody hear what I'm saying? Who's doing announcements? Come on. Come on. All night. If you need an envelope, just raise your hand so that the ushers can bring you one. with me today and that was her favorite song hallelujah and you know what she would always say lord let the angels let them watch all over my children you see she she don't see where i am today she don't see where i am today you know i'm not that child that i was when she was here she would never think that her daughter would be up here singing the same song that she thought when she was young, she was just, she was just saying, watch over my God, watch over him, watch over when they get up in the morning, watch over when they out there in the streets and out. Just watch over my children. So all of you all can see here today, he's been watching over T. He's been watching over me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stretch your hands. Stretch your hands toward the offering right now. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Father God, we thank you right now. We thank you for the word because we asked you earlier in our service that God would, you would just give us a ring of word and you would use a man of God. But not only did you use a man of God, you used his servant on a minister Sherwood on today, oh God. Just as a remind me, God, and I'm no, and I believe they reminded so many of you just how God 
has been watching over each one of us individually just for you. And even, oh God, as you keep giving our tithes and our offerings, oh God, we ask you just to watch over it. Your, your, your word says the only thing that we have to do is just give and believe by faith that you and only you will open up a window that we will not have room enough to see. And we believe it right now, today, by faith. In Jesus' name, we pray and we thank you, God. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Whew, I just got excited there for a moment. Hallelujah. But let's go to our offer. We just want to believe that everybody who's watching Facebook right now and YouTube, if you will look at those options right now, we want you is to be a part of that giving. And as, as you've heard on today that our wow, uh, our chairperson or our leader, Miss Bernadine Randall, she put out a challenge to everybody out there today. If you would like to be a part of that ministry on giving those underwears as well as those socks, taking up that mantle to do just that, remember it's new, and some lightly used shoes, if you want to just, don't want to bring it in or, or send it in or what, look, go online, right up under the ministry, and it says give, and you want to put a little note there, we want you is to be a part of that too. Amen. So we, are thank, we thank you, and we believe that each one of you will actually do that. We don't take it kind of, man. I know we got some visitors who are on the YouTube as well as uh, Facebook right now. I see we have, we just want to welcome everybody. New Life Family, give those who are first-time watchers on hand, who are watching us right now, just give them a warm welcome because we know if you was here, first thing our first lady, Sister Scylla, would do is give you the biggest hug that you could possibly receive. Our bishop would welcome you, and every member here in New Life would do the same. Amen. And again, uh, we just want to thank everyone who came out on last Sunday who was actually online but anyway, Sister Chantel, she's not here. Thank you. And she was our, our, our chairperson as well as our MC. And didn't she do a fabulous job on last Sunday? The coordination, all of the, the prayer call, the children's ministry. We just want to say thank you to everyone. Children's ministry. Sister Dana, if you're watching those cupcakes, all, every member in this house, listen, give yourself a hand for those donations that many of you actually gave. And we know that Pastor Jesse Smalley and many members of his family as well as his members, they came out is to visit and be a part of that. We just want to thank all of you too. Amen. And... You know, um, even though I was talking about my mom just a uh, few moments ago, you know, some things, you know, I'm, a, I'm a teacher, too. And, you know, Jesus was a teacher. I'm like Jesus. I teach, too. Amen. You can give me a clap on that one. I like that, too. Amen. Amen. And sometimes, you know, when we have to teach people how to be nice, you know, sometimes. Because sometimes we don't want to be nice. You know, people do stuff for you over and over and over again, and we don't never want to tell them, thank you. I'll show them a little token sometimes is to let you know people give you stuff in the church all the time or whatever, and you never come back and say thank you. But I know our bishop, our first lady, and if you heard all on the phones or whatever, we are not like that. So we just want to show our kindness to all of those who participated on last Saturday night. We know some of them are not here, but we're going to call their names anyway. And even as I call your name, I want you to come just quickly up here. It's almost like running up here to get that gift for you. Sister Charity, I know that she's not here. Come on down, Deacon Chris. Listen, that staff, come on, come on, get it, because run on down, because this is exciting. Give him a hand, guys. Let me tell you, he's here. He's here. Now, even though we're giving this to you, we want you to show some love to somebody. Do something for you, too. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Minister Sherwood, 
Amen. There you go. Come on. I know you're reaching, but I say that to you too. Somebody do something nice for you. You better give it back in return. Pay it forward. Amen. Sister Dana, she's not here, but we just want to thank her for all of the wonderful things that she's actually done. Sister Roshana, we didn't forget you, girl. Come on down here. Amen. We just want to be a blessing to you as well. And of course, I know that our bishop and our sister Stella on last Sunday, they got up and they told you uh, many times how much they truly appreciate you. And you as members, you as members, we thank you. Come on, girl. Come on, get this right here. I know you're getting it for your mom. But listen, the same thing go for your mom. Somebody do something nice, you got to pay it for. Give something back. Amen. God bless you, sis. Amen. That was, um, yeah, yeah, that, that was my uh, actually TM moment. And we are grateful for every member who comes out and be a part of New Life with our bishop and our first. Everybody here, they say it so many times in words and in deeds. How much? TT says it, Boba, every y'all on the line. Oh, we just love you. But I have to say this too, just like me and all of us. I know that we all mean it from the bottom of our hearts. Amen. God bless you. Bishop, Sister Silla, this is the announcement. Just another quick announcement from our wild leader, Mother Bernadine. Testing, amen. Domestic violence. <laughs> it, for some of us, as I said earlier, it was just a way of life. You know, it was, it was normal. Something, that, something so abnormal has become normal. And it's not just physical violence, it's emotional. So those that have relatives and loved ones that are dealing with it, prayer works, but sometimes you need intervention. So we'll pray for those people. Amen. Let's stand for the benediction. Learned so much as a little kid, man. You see people fight all the time and break bottles. It's like we were growing up in a war zone. And I'm so grateful for the shepherd. Brother, but we shepherd me right out of that. Through the crack, through the drugs, through the through the illicit drug trade and all that. He shepherded me away from all that to a life that has meaning. I'm glad he's my shepherd. Wouldn't, wouldn't want another shepherd. Amen. He's been so good to me, been better to me, not been to myself. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your expression of love. We thank you for loving us to the point where you lead us and guide us. Thank you for our new birth. You were in the room. You were the midwife. Now unto him who's able to keep each of us from falling. He alone has the power to present each of us faultless in the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, to him be majesty, dominion, and power. Now and forevermore. And may the fellowship of the Holy Spirit remind you. As the text says, the Lord is. What is he to you? Is he your friend? Is he your sovereign? Is he Lord? Is he Adonai? Whatever he is, make him big today. Rejoice in him. God bless you. We love you. Go in his peace and his grace. Make sure before you leave here, give somebody a, an imaginary hug, imaginary high five. We love you. Be blessed. We'll look for you Wednesday. Mother, great thing on the presentation.